In this video, I'm going to show you how we can create this funky effect using Photoshop. So let's get started. Hey, what's up, guys? Drew here, and as you can see, this is the final output. Now, for this effect, I will be using this stock photo. And to create this effect, I will start with cutting out the background. So, first of all, double click on your background and unlock it. And then I'm gonna select my move tool, hold my shift key, and I'm gonna move it a little bit here in the center, you know. So that looks better. Uh, and now we have to cut him out from the background. So for that, go and select your quick selection tool from here uh, and make your brush a bit bigger. Now use your bracket key and make a selection. Now after that you will need to remove your selection from this part so for that go and select the minus option and remove it just like that. So it's looking pretty decent and after that go and click on your layer mask option. Uh, so we have the layer mask. After that go and create a new blank layer from here and put it under your model. This will be the background. So for that select your paint bucket tool uh, and make sure it's a white color and fill it. After that double click on your background layer and select gradient overlay. In the gradient first thing you do you select your black and white gradient but instead of this black color uh, you go and select your grayish tone uh, closer to black. See now that seems better hit ok and again ok. Change the style to radial and reverse it so it's outside now put it a bit here and increase your size uh, until you get the look that you like uh, so this is pretty good uh, I want light to be here and then decrease the opacity until it starts to blend better uh, so this is looking good and hit ok background is done and it's time to create the shadow so for that select your model layer and make a copy by pressing ctrl J after that select your layer mask here right click and select apply layer mask then go to image, adjustment, hue saturation uh, and turn down the lightness to minus 100, hit OK. Then press Ctrl T, right click, select flip vertical. So it's like that and then put it here, uh, match the arm with arm. Now it doesn't look very good because the direction is wrong. So for that hold down your Ctrl key and drag this corner all the way here. Uh, and then you hold on your another control key and drag this corner a little bit here uh, like that looks pretty good uh, and then go and confirm it now the shadow is really sharp and unbalanced so I'm gonna go and match it a little bit proper here and put it under your model see right here now you can manage it easier uh, then go to filter Blur and select Gaussian Blur. And Gaussian Blur don't apply too much. Uh, I think this uh, 10 pixel looks good. Hit OK. Then reduce the opacity to like 40-50%. And now if you zoom out, looks much better. After that, go and create a new blank layer from here. Uh, select your brush tool. And make sure that the hardness is 0%. Uh, and your color is black here. Uh, make Zoom in here and fill in the color here. Uh, like this so you have enough black space near his hand uh, looks pretty good uh, a little bit here zoom out then go and change the opacity to somewhere on like 30% or something like that yeah that looks better now if you zoom in you can see the edges of the hand is not very smooth so for that select your layer mask right click and select refine mask now in the refine mask go and shift edge a little bit in the minus side minus 12 increase your feather uh, and then increase your contrast all the way here uh, looks pretty good you can decrease the feather a bit uh, pretty good and decrease the edges a little bit uh, damn good let's look at the original and afterwards perfect hit ok now zoom up then go and create a new adjustment layer and select curves then the curves go and turn on your clipping mask and then go and increase your brightness so it will only affect the model uh, so I think this bright is more than enough and close it 
So the setup is ready and now we can start adding in the shapes. So to do that, select your shape tool from here, right click and select custom shape tool. Now in the custom shape tool, at first uh, you won't have all these shapes. So for that, click on this little icon and select all and you will find all these shapes. They are default in Photoshop. So first one I would like to use is artistic seven. So click on that. Now make sure all of your shapes that are under your model. So what do we do? Here's the model, right? So I'm going to go and uh, create a new blank layer exactly under him. Uh, and then I'm going to go and draw my shape uh, somewhere like this. Looks pretty cool. Now I want to change the color. So for that, I'm going to double click on the thumbnail and I'm going to go and change it to white and hit OK. Select your move tool and move it here. Now I'm going to right click and select rasterize. Then I'm going to go and change the blend mode to soft light. So it, uh, it mixes with background better. After that, uh, select, make sure you have selected your shape layer, press Ctrl T, right click and select warp. Now you can drag it uh, just like the way you want. So I'm going to try to create that a little bit of impact look near his hand and I'm going to squish it a little bit from here and there. After that, go and confirm it. Now it looks good, but we can blend it better. So for that, go and select your eraser tool from here. And in the eraser, make sure here that your hardness is 0% and make sure it's this big and start erasing it from the edges so it blends better and looks nicer. So this is looking pretty damn good. Now using the same method, I will apply a lot of different shapes. And if you want to know which shape I'm using, the name will be on the screen. So help yourself. So most of the background shapes are done and after that you select your first shape that you just created you hold your shift key and select your final shape shape 5 then you press ctrl g so they are in a single group and easier to manage now here comes one important part i'm gonna go and select my shape tool just like this and i'm gonna go to my shapes and then i'm gonna go and select the shape called grime 7 and after that I'm gonna go and draw it. Now normally I suggest that you hold your shift key so you can draw it in proportion but this time don't. Don't hold the shift key and make it squishy a little bit like this you know. Uh, perfect awesome. Then you double click on your thumbnail here exactly right. Then you go and change the color of it to something orangish. Uh, looks pretty good. Hit OK. Then I'm gonna go and move it uh, exactly here. Now, as you can see, uh, this is under my model layer, just to be careful. Then I'm going to go and change its blending mode to soft light. After that, when you're happy with your shape, uh, you can right click and select rasterize. Now, as you can see, it looks pretty cool. And for more impact, you can go change it to overlay. Looks pretty good. And you can move it a little bit here. And in my shape, I'm going to go and change the opacity of this one. So it looks less annoying good perfect so at this moment background shapes are done and there is one shape that i'm going to put on the top so for that go and select your shape tool uh, go to the shapes and here i'm going to select the shape called artistic one so then go and create a new blank layer on top of that and i'm going to go and draw it so this looks pretty good then double click and select white color hit ok right click and select rasterize so we have the shape after that press ctrl T and rotate it so it is only around his leg uh, like this and confirm it. Now it's way too much so select your eraser and remove the unnecessary parts. Now when you're going to remove it from his leg here 
don't remove it all the way just keep uh, some of the parts here and that so it gives it a really cool look nothing else then you can change the opacity a little bit if you like uh, so i think 95 looks better so all the shape part is done and now we can start creating the lighting so for that i'm gonna go and create a new blank layer from here uh, and i'm gonna rename it to big lights pretty cool then select your brush tool and make sure you have selected regular round brush 0% uh, hardness then i'm gonna go and make it bigger uh, this big looks good uh, so first color I want to try is somewhere around red uh, This looks pretty good hit ok and do a click Then I'm gonna go and change my color to somewhere around blue uh, Pretty good and click Then this time I'm gonna go and change it to somewhere orange But for the orange I'm gonna make it smaller because I also want to see his face properly uh, So I think this big is good then go and change its blending mode to screen so you have pretty good lighting but we can make it even better so what do you do you press ctrl j so you have a copy of it right then you go to filter blur and you go and select motion blur in the motion blur his leg is this way right so you also use the same angle and my distance is 719 but you can use it as big as you want so now if i turn it on and off see it looks much better and you can just go again filter uh, and select the same blur again so it's a little bit more softer and to make it more impactful you can make another copy of it press ctrl j and it's more impactful so big lights are done now we can create the smaller lights so for that create a new blank layer from here and i'm gonna name it small lights now for the smaller lights go and change your color to white uh, just like that uh, i'm gonna zoom in a little bit and then i will make it a bit smaller my brush like this and then I will do a click, make it a bit more smaller, click, a little bit more smaller, click, a little bit more, click, and a little bit more, click. So we have really cool lighting effect like that. Then make a copy of it, press Ctrl J, uh, select your move tool and move them a little bit here. Press Ctrl T, so now you can rotate it however you want. And then I'm going to move them here like this. Then I'm going to go and confirm it. Now we have to create some lighting in the environment. So it's basically the same process. You go and create a new blank layer and you name it. Pretty legit name. <laughs> After that, go and create a select your brush tool from here. White color, simple as that. And do a dot. Make it a bit bigger dot. A little bit bigger dot. And make it scattery here and there like that. Uh, take your time and be patient. Uh, like that and if you don't like the dot simply go and erase it see pretty cool then uh, after that you double click on your layer right the dot layer and then you select outer glow where is it here and the outer glow uh, first of all i'm gonna go and increase the size a little and then i'm gonna go and change its color to somewhere around blue uh, so the blue looks cool uh, then hit ok and now you can increase the size as much as you like see amazing now i'm gonna make another copy of it so i'm gonna go and press ctrl j uh, select these dots and then put them here and then i will press ctrl t and rotate them a little bit so they don't look repetitive right uh, then i'm gonna go and confirm it so now the effect is done and now we can start doing the polishing so by polishing first thing i would like to do is go to my gradient overlay and in the gradient i will increase the size a little bit because it's way too dark now it seems better uh, and in the opacity a little less or higher yeah that looks good hit ok after that i want to manage my shapes a little bit so i will start with the one and let's move it a little bit on the top so we can see the orange splatter better and here we have the orange splatter right so i'm gonna make it a bit bigger uh, hold my shift alt and make it slightly bigger like that uh, confirm it and put it a little bit here now it looks better then i'm gonna go to my curves the highlight and i'm gonna make it a little bit more brighter because it's a bit more darker uh, so more brightness yeah looks pretty cool and close it after that i would like to go to my shadow layer and decrease the opacity a little bit more because it seems more harsh uh, select my eraser and erase the border a little bit so it's more soft looks better so that's it <laughs> and this is the final output 
I really hope that you guys learned something from this video and it is 100% done inside Photoshop, no extra plugins or brushes or anything. So I really hope that you guys learned something from this video and if you did, hit that like button and share this video with your friends. And if you have any kind of questions or suggestions, uh, feel free to ask me in comment section below. Till then, goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop.